Okay, boys and girls, sports fans. I'm here with, um, yeah, Graham, <laughs> the the man the man who does everything down here in Australia for uh, for the SAP community. So we're going to be talking about this little solution that you built, aren't we? We are. Yeah. And what's your problem? Why did you do it? It's a pretty interesting story, really. I mean, the, the, the customer that I first built this for had a had what they thought was a change management problem. They uh, they were rolling out some new functionality and they, uh, the public sector organisation, large number of uh, middle management approvers in a workflow process, mm. and they needed to get them trained on uh, essentially how to log into SAP and work and approve workflows. They had no training rooms, they had no bandwidth, they had no trainers, so they, the project deadline was in fact under severe jeopardy because they just couldn't get these people trained. Mm. Um, so I came up with an idea where they could um, do their workflow approval pretty easily and simply just from their existing email client. Right. And, uh, and, and got the project back on track. That was about five and a half years ago. I first did that for a customer and, uh, and it's been uh, very popular and uh, they're going mad now. That particular customer's doing about 1,400 workflow approvals a day through the system. Right, and uh, was that originally developed for the desktop only, I presume, or was it developed for any platform? It, well, it was, it was developed in theory for any email client, but certainly at that time, mm. I, I didn't re that particular customer had no real mobile type devices. Shortly right. afterwards, they rolled out Blackberries and, mm. and uh, the, the application worked on Blackberries mm. with no change at all, so right. that, uh, uh, that helped uh, cement the popularity of it, really, with them. Yeah, yeah. sure. And, and you've got a very specific business model for this today, so how does that work? Yeah, the business model is that I, I've now got it um, hosted in the cloud, for want of a better way to put it, and, uh, and I uh, establish a secure RFC connection to my customer's back-end system and, uh, and process it all through my infrastructure. Mm. So they don't need to get too heavily involved with setting up their own infrastructure and things like that with their back-end SAP system. It's just purely giving me that secure access to the right sort of stuff. And then I charge them on a transaction basis. So I know not just on a start transaction basis, but on a completed executed so transaction So it's, it's got to be completely round trip. It's a complete transaction basis. So effectively uh, what I'm automating is the workflow decision step. Mm. I charge them a small amount of money for each executed workflow step. Right, okay. So your revenue stream is entirely dependent upon the extent to which people are prepared to use it. So that means it's got Absolutely. to be, it's got to do the business, right? Absolutely. Yep. Right. What about governance in terms of, um, you know, you've said about security. I mean, people go nuts about that kind of thing, don't they? So, I mean, have you had any issues there? Yeah, I mean, we've spent a fair bit of time talking to, to the security um, police in various organisations and they're reasonably comfortable with it. So in terms of, from a technical point of view, it's a, it's a uh, encrypted RFC connection. So mm. I guess we're, to a certain extent we're using a proprietary protocol which um, limits the surface area for any potential attacks. It's encrypted across the wire until it gets inside the customer network. Mm. Um, and inside there, technically in their ABAP stack, I've, um, I provide the customer with a single function module that effectively contains a whole lot of pro proxy function modules. So they only need to concern themselves with allowing the user they've provided for me access to that particular function mm. module and function group and any specific functionality they want to include in the, in the email that I sent. So we've made the surface area of, uh, of uh, the security layer as small as possible so it's an easier to control. And what about the impact on the landscape? Is it, is it, is it trivial or, or what? Yeah, it's pretty trivial. I mean, it, Essentially, they just need to, so, anyway. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they just need to open up um, that secure RFC connection, which is a, is a thing they've already done to to for SAP support mm. through their existing SAP router environment right. to SAP. So it's not something that's new for them; it's something they've already got in place. Mm. Um, and just like the connection from um, SAP support, it comes from a known point in the network, so they can limit uh, again the surface area of where things are coming from, mm. lock it down, control it. Ultimately, I'm connecting using a user that they've provided me with, so if there's any concerns about security or anything else or they want to opt out of the service, mm. all they've got to do is change the password of the user and I'm gone. That sounds great. It's beautiful, mate. Very are you, elegant. Are you going to show me it? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, as I said, that uh, email notification process, so everyone's probably already familiar with uh, standard workflow email notification uh, from SAP where essentially you get an email that usually has an, a link in it, and when you click on the link, you either implicitly or explicitly log on to your SAP system, maybe through a portal, maybe through a custom-built uh, application, or even the SAP GUI to execute the workflow. This thing works a slightly different way. Here's an example of an email for someone after an, trying to uh, approve some leave, get some leave, a flex leave request, and you can see we have a relatively rich HTML email. 
um, that can be rendered in pretty much any email client these days. You can see I've put in the email the team calendar. It's exactly the same team calendar that would appear in the MSS portal. And so we can see who the person is, what leave they want to take. The, the idea is, is this information should be everything that a, a proven needs to know to make a decision. And then to make a decision, it's essentially two clicks. When we click the option, for example, to approve, it addresses a reply email. And then all we need to do is send it. That reply email goes back to my application, which does a whole lot of security checking to make sure, for example, it comes from the right person, it's associated with the right workflow, all that sort of stuff. And then it executes the decision on behalf of the approver without any need to reconnect. So because it's a email client that we're driving this from, it means it works online, offline, it works on pretty much any device because email clients work the same anywhere. So we can use this on an iPhone, an Android, an iPad, with no change to the underlying architecture. Just give you a quick look at another one. This is a purchase order example. So again, we put in this part of the email as much information as we need for the approver to make a decision. We can also attach documents. So for example, if a quotation was attached to the business document in the SAP system, we could e email this to the approver as an attachment on the email. And again, they just make their decision. Let's say we're gonna reject this one. I click reject, I click send, job done. Do you have to custom build each of those um, notifications? Uh, in this case, you've got a purchase order, in the other case, it was um, a different type of, uh, of approval linked to the calendar. Yeah, we, we, there's a little bit of customization that's there available. So I have some generic um, coding that'll, that'll render sort of things that are normally there. But typically what we do is that middle part of the email, the important part about how a, a user makes a decision, we leave that totally under their control. So at runtime, I do an RFC call into their ABAP app system and they typically write their own code to formulate that. So, so uh, that gives the customer complete control of what information goes in there. So if it, for an example, um, the guy approving a leave request wanted to actually know the leave balance of this particular person, they would just need to change their end of the code to include leave balance in the email and it would automatically appear as soon as they had it activated. And in terms of um, development effort in order to put this together, what does it require at the um, customers end? How much time would they typically have to spend on something like this? I guess that depends on their skills, but ultimately all they're doing is building a little bit of um, HTML, so it's pretty pretty minor. I, uh, for example, I spoke to a prospect last Tuesday on the telephone in the afternoon. They rang me back on Wednesday and said they wanted to um, do a demo to their executives using their own data. So I, I organised with them to get uh, RS, the secure RFC connection to their back-end system. They gave it to me at one o'clock in the afternoon, and at 20 past one on the same afternoon, they had their first emails going through. That's and, pretty And we're starting to change their end, and so they're tailoring them for themselves. So I mean, all I need is that connectivity to the back-end with appropriate um, security so that I can execute, essentially, the workflow APIs, and away it goes. That's, that's pretty stunning, and you're not requiring this doesn't require you to use any of the um, SAP backend stuff or the SAP Unwired platform stuff or any other of that stuff. No, I mean the connectivity is simple RFC. So, right. so there's 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 no web services involved. There's no um, gateways, Unwired platforms, things like that. I'm, I'm essentially, all I'm doing is is sending and receiving emails, and my application is doing that, which is hosted in the cloud. And those emails are generated and, and executed upon via RFC to the customer's system. So uh, the, the surface area on their system is very, very low. Um, it can work with everything that supports RFC. So the back-end system could be a 4.6 system. Wow. In fact, when I first wrote it, the back-end system was a 4.6 system. <laughs>